Arizona's high desert is a land of extremes. Parching heat by day, frigid cold by night. It is a land of beautiful allure and deadly potential. Just because it's pretty doesn't mean it's safe. A, a misstep, an error in judgment, forgetting to do a basic piece of preparedness can have disastrous effects. Scorpions, rattlers, flash floods, and miles upon miles of nothing but distant horizon. Each year, thousands of people get lost in the desert southwest. Of these, some 400 will die. When you head out of this canyon and you realize there's 60 miles in either direction and you don't know which way to travel, that's impending doom. Hey! Hey! For the lost, the desert is a barren, confusing place where delusion and panic are sometimes all that separate the living from the dead. So if you're having trouble walking 100 yards, do you really think you can walk for seven hours? And by the way, you're too damn late. Even if you knew where you were, you're screwed, right? Or do you not get that yet? This is the story of four strangers lost in Arizona's high desert. They have no food, no water, and no idea how to get out. Hey, I'm Chad. I'm Chad, I'm two. Nice Chad, two, you. Linda, and Aaron four brave strangers who have traveled to the American Southwest for an adventure that is almost entirely unknown to them. They know they are about to be dropped in the desert with little food or water. And they know they will have to fend for themselves. What they don't know is how, or who will be with them along the way. Wilderness expert Cody Lundeen is the founder of Arizona's Aboriginal Living Skills School. He's spent a lifetime teaching students how to survive the desert with nothing more than the clothes on their back. It's a four-hour ride north from Phoenix. I'm already lost and we're not even in the desert. All the time they'll have to get to know one another and guess at the ordeal to come. And in the distance, a lone figure awaits them. Guys, look, there's somebody in the road. What's up with that? Oh my gosh. What's the sign said? High desert. High desert. Totally. Uh, when I first saw Cody, I thought, what a nut. Yeah, pull over, Hi. pick him up. All right. Hey. Hello, my wife. Yeah. Hi, Desert. Hi, Desert. Care if I hop in? Let's go sure. for it. Far out. All right. Mighty windy out there. He climbed in the car. I immediately thought, where is this guy's shoes? All right. What happened to your shoes? Uh, yeah. Don't have any of those. No shoes? No shoes. Thanks for picking me up, though. Not bad. Let's just drive on. All right. All right. Let's go, Chad. Right. A lot of people are fearful when they come out into the outdoors, especially the southwest. It's renowned for the most venomous creatures, most species of rattlesnakes, etc. But I consider it my home. The thing that kills the most people in an outdoor survival situation is panic. And panic comes from a lack of understanding. So the more understanding you have about a place, the better off you're going to be. That was my first thought was, where are his shoes? And then my second thought was, who is this? Like, this guy is, this is hokey. This isn't, there's something up here. This isn't, this guy's not real. This is cokey. You're at the proverbial end of the road. So go ahead. Just before setting out, Cody does a careful search of their bags. You can wrap me around with that. They're allowed only what a typical day hiker would carry. Food. A sandwich. An extra top layer. And the most essential element of all. So you each get two quarts of water, okay, to carry with you. Water's your life here. Why is it your life? Because you'll die, die. die. They'll die without them. Everything else gets left behind. We got this flashlight for the night to minimize fright, right? Mm -hmm. And okay. go. Neosporin, the brush, spirulina. 
also got some band-aids and some q-tips and some dental floss and what's this here it's um pickled green papaya <laughs> next okay so i've got this goodie here <laughs> what the hell is uh, that it's a bouncy rubber a bouncy rubber okay. it's <laughs> <laughs> what, what's that little orange man? Yeah, they're, you know those, um, they have parachute men attached to them. I'm just, I, for fun, just... <laughs> Next! I didn't really think you were going to go through with the search. Oh, oh mercy. <laughs> A bundle of fun. Yes. I was bringing it for all of you guys. Um, you know, I love this stuff as much as anyone else. <laughs> so, so, let me squeeze it one so more time. time. Hold on, let me just, just, just oh, squeeze yeah. it. Oh, 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 oh. All right, okay. Yeah. Right. So put it right, if it'll even fit. <laughs> <laughs> now we're down to these real extreme need items. You know? <laughs> two poop shooters and the bouncing rubber. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'll trade you two poop shooters, and for some unknown reason, I'm going to let you have Yes! Them. Yeah! <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Another gift I'm going to give you, because it is monsoon season in the high desert, I have these little gifts, and hopefully we won't need to use them. Thank you. These are 55-gallon drum liners. He handed that to us as a gift. I went, you've got to be kidding me. Like, well, thanks. You know, and shoved it in my bag. So try not to poke them. Keep them all in one piece. The desert's full of stuff that pricks, pokes, or stings. So try to keep keep those pads um, in one piece because you're going to need them. But we're losing daylight, so we got to hit the proverbial trail. Okay, where are we going, and why are we going? What are we looking for primarily? Always in the high desert. What are you looking for? Water. 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 Okay. So think like a raindrop. Water falls, and then what does it do when it hits the ground? It runs down. It runs down. What I thought was, as soon as we got going, he was going to put on a pair of big high-tech hiking boots. So when he just kept on walking, that, I began to take him more seriously with that. It's 5 p.m. and about 84 degrees. Sunset and much colder temperatures are less than two hours away. Chad, Tu, Linda, and Aaron are now hikers in a contrived experiment that will soon become painfully real. But when you take uh, 21st century Americans that don't have a lot of experience in the outdoors uh, and stick them into the American Southwest and you go into the desert country, it was almost predictable that there's gonna be some kind of stress or, or some kind of problem arises naturally as a result of it. A lot of people go into the wilderness with the it can't happen to me attitude. Which direction do you want to maximize your energy on now? We're running out of light. We're down. Why? Uh, we're lower. We might find water and shelter. OK. Yeah, we're less agree with that? to the winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. So let's just keep following this drainage down. By 7 p.m., night is quickly falling. Finding safe shelter in this flood wash is critical. Pay attention when you're walking with the stones. This isn't three's company, so you're not going to be able to walk hand in hand here. You're going to have to go single file. You can lose up to a gallon of water an hour in sweat in hardcore desert temperatures. See the glow on Chad's face? Everyone's kind of, it's probably not just the two pounds of sunscreen he put on it. Water's your life out here. The full moon signals a bright but cold night ahead. Around them, the desert's nocturnal creatures stir to life. Winter snakes typically out and about. Now, as the light dims, their options for shelter fade. It looks pretty. The group chooses to bed down under a juniper tree, barely above the flood zone. The main reason we're here at all is there's semi-flat ground. It's getting dark. We do have this cover canopy to try to keep our radiant energy and heat in our bodies, but also we have the cold air sinks thing coming down. The main thing that you need to worry about is your body temperature dropping too low tonight. Okay. And if you get wet, you're screwed. So you need to keep your clothing dry. 